this is Yasmin. This is Jessica. Hi, Hi. Jessica. How are you? Good. Lovely to meet you. Um, uh, yes. I was going to say she's gorgeous. <laughs> Bless you. I'll take it. <laughs> You're both gorgeous. I know. I was going to say, I'm living for this today. This is like beautiful, like decor around. It's very bright and very flowery. I love it. So good. Good energy. Uh, I've got a lot of flowers, girl. I've got tons of flower crowns, so it's all good. <laughs> well, I could see, I seriously, if I was casting a movie, I'd cast you as sisters or cousins or something like that. Ooh. There you go. I see a little of that. So, y Yasmin, it, oh, yes. Yasmin's from Performing Arts Studio West, and she does so so much work in the community and and um and and she'll she'll tell you i'll let you guys speak i'll just sit back you guys chat tell me about yourself okay well where do i start i am 22 years old i live in the city of inglewood california and i've been doing um I guess before the pandemic happened, I went to the events with um, ABC7, which is one of the biggest television stations in Southern California. I visited their station um, two years ago during a group um, studio tour. And let's see, I went to AIDS Walk Los Angeles for three years straight, which is one of the most exciting events that I always rave about. And recently, last year for the first time, I went to the East Los Angeles Mexican Independence Day Parade. And it's just a lot of colorful sights to see, you know, women and men dressed up in, um, I guess, in, you know, the culture of that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The dress, everything is gorgeous. And because I'm Mexican American, you know, I love, you know, my culture so much. And I always wear bright colors all the time. Well, right now I'm wearing like black, but right now I got, you know, my yellow to, you know, to show that I love colorful things if that makes any sense and I've also been to walk now for autism speaks for I think about two years from 2008 I think it's about three years actually as well so that's a lot to take you know I, I've been doing a lot so but with this pandemic I haven't been able to really go anywhere so I've just been safer at home or I've been going out on essential errands so it's been very difficult for me and I've been developing some sort of um I guess with the anxiety and depression, I've been struggling with that for, you know, for a couple of years. It's one of the hardest things that someone like myself that is very young, and I've been through a lot of, you know, bullying, I've been through a lot of, you know, negativity in my life. And it took me years to get noticed by, I guess, by one of my favorite television stations, you know, throughout, you know, throughout the first early years of social media. And I've been on, I think I've been on Facebook for a couple of years, and then Instagram and then Twitter and so on. And the rest is history. So, you know, I I really enjoy what I do, but right now because of the pandemic, it's not allowing me to, you know, be anywhere with the people that I that I adore, not just at the station, but performing at Studio West as well. I have great friends everywhere, you know, in my life. And I will never take that for granted. It's you know, it's been hard because, you know, I've been at home most of the time. You know, I've been, you know, I just I'd rather be on the safe side, but if I do need to go out. That's only for the essentials. And I, I really miss everybody as a whole right now. Yeah, you know, this this time is really testing. This time sort of, it's, it's challenged us all in a way that we're not used to. Um, but that doesn't mean it can't be any less productive. It's just about how we look at things, right? So, um, you know, I always, I always try to sort of say to people, you know, what do, what do you do for your, for your routines? Like what's your daily routines? Because, you know, for me, I had to shift a lot because my entire business, I run an art school. So I, I do exactly what um, David does with, you know, and, and with the PSG or Western stuff, but I do it for internationals. So what happened to me, all the international <laughs> flights stopped. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to handle this? And I, I, it's funny that you talk about um, anxiety and depression because they were the two very key um, things that I, hold on one second, my cat. Oh, I love it. My cat is right here too. Oh my God. Should we show our cats right now? Show Please. your cats. I wish I had it. I'll show um, no. <laughs> I just. Oh my God. I have two cats right now. So if you hear Nala meowing, she's a Turkish that Angora. Was, that was great. She was, was just meowing for me to get her. She was, as soon as I said that I was struggling, she like came over. 
<laughs> this is my cat. <laughs> like a fucking cat. Um, well, I got something off the cuddle with. <laughs> oh, that was just brilliant. I just and it's just peered into just into frame, just into frame. She really like timed that well. Right. Um, no, what I was saying is, so that they're the two very things that I've struggled with. And, and as an artist, I've got to say that the, they're the things that happen a lot. And it's one of the things I'm most passionate about is mental health. But I, I know in order for me to get through this, I had to look at my routines and I had to find new ways to feel good about my day, which is really hard because we get so used to these routines that really help us get through. And I can imagine for you, you really yeah. need that structure, right? You really need that structure. So, so, so you yeah. tell, tell me about your routine. What do you do in the morning? What do you do in the morning? Well, let's see. The first thing I do, I wake up, I just, you know, watch a little bit of TV or I make sure that my cats have their food and water. Yes. I have two cats. Like I mentioned, I just got to make sure that they have everything clean. Oh, dear Lord. Sorry, my mom's in the background right now laughing, so let's just ignore that for right now. <laughs> she just got back home from selling tamales, so there, there we go. So anyways, so my routine is obviously getting up. I obviously turn on the TV. I watch a little bit of it, and while that's in the background, I check, you know, what my cats have, like their food and their water, make sure their litter box is clean. And, you know, I have to get myself together with brushing my teeth and, you know, washing my face and so on. And I gotta, you know, I gotta make sure that that's pretty, it's, it's pretty boring, honestly, you know, with my daily routine, because I do chores, you know, sure. so, almost six or seven days a week, yeah. So it does help me, though, to, you know. Yes, well, what I was going. gonna say is, could we put something artistic for you to do every morning? You know, because I, one of the things I would say is, you know, I now do a thing because my energy is always really good when I dance or sing, preferably to Madonna of a morning, but it will be anything. And I will put on something and I will just dance around my room for about five minutes and, and remind myself, oh, that's right. I'm alive. I'm lucky. I'm here. I'm t I can start this day and I can do anything I want to do. So I was going to say, rather than doing that, could you come on? I would love to say, I know that you, you're a great public speaker. Why couldn't your new routine to be to come yes, on and yes. share your view for the day on your social media? Yeah. You know, hi, here I am checking in my view for the day. Here's a little bit of wisdom I, or something artistic that, you know, inspired you a TV show you want to talk about a, uh, an actor that inspired you, mm -hmm. something that you had from the day before that you could do. And that's the first thing you do is something artistic because that will fill your like body full of that endorphins rush that we get when we do something artistic, right? When we like, we sing or we dance or we act or we do anything. We're like, oh my God, that's great. Let me do it again. <laughs> you know, I do something um, artistic on the side. It's more of a hobby when I feel like I'm down. I'm just like, you know, let me put on my music. Let me just sing out loud, you know, in my room. This is actually my closet slash nail room because, you know, I, I obviously do my own nails. I'm not sure if David's told you about it. I'm just kidding. She has amazing <laughs> nails. Look at I them. know. I've been looking at them. I'm like, and we have Ooh. some Stunning. Yeah. You know, when this pandemic's over, I'm coming over to your house and you're going to do my nails. Would you want to have bling on them for an entire day? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. The manicure is hanging. It's hanging here. It's. I think this is a good time, though. Even though it is, you know, quarantine pandemic, where you want to call it. I call it quarantine life because it's because when you say pandemic, it's really scary. But I say quarantine life because I think it's better for the people like myself that are self-taught nail artists like it's a good time for us because we already have our tools we have everything i even have my my nail drill i have my led light and i have a lot of gel polishes and my brushes let me just you know let me do a little show and tell these are my brushes that i use whenever it's for nail art or sculpting if that makes sense yeah oh my god you just inspired me for something else that you could do you should do yeah. youtube is such a great resource have you thought about yes. potentially filming yourself doing your nails and showing people and introducing people how to do that i i would not know how to do something like that that would be like so amazing i mean i just watching that then and you were like i've got all this and i've got all that and i was like oh my god what do those things even do <laughs> like, <laughs> And this is how you know I've got a professional level going on, even though I'm self-taught. 
I have my little swatching sticks right here of every gel polish I have in my drawer right now. So yeah, I have another one right here. It's a, it's a bigger collection. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah, I have a lot, you know, of like literally I even have rhinestones that I collected from Wish or Amazon. That's, let's be real. I, I've had a lot of bling and whatnot. <laughs> So yeah, I've, I've had that question before in regards to, you know, filming um, a nail tutorial, but I wouldn't know where to start. I don't have, a, you know, a very good um, cell phone, which, which is another reason I'm going to be getting one pretty soon, a brand new one, because this one I've had for three years. It's been with me throughout the events, and, you know, I, I threw it by accident a couple times, but it still works, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm team Android for life. <laughs> but yeah, it's just... You know, I definitely would love to, um, I guess, have like the, um, I don't know how to explain it, if it makes sense, but I would obviously love to, you know, be in the nail industry once this, you know, this is over, once it's fully safe to reopen and make sure that everything, that everybody is, you know, healthy and happy. But right now, because I'm self taught, yeah, it's just, I can't really legally do um nails and stuff because I don't have the proper licensing or the education, but what I do on my social media, on my Instagram, especially where I post more of like, you know, nail photos and like different content, if that makes sense. I, um, you know, I tell people as best as I can, like, don't rip off, you know, your extent, your nail extensions, because it's going to damage the natural nail plate, you know, for example. So I try to educate as best as I can. And, you know, not only well, I, I was going to say, feel, what, if, what if we helped you? What if we helped you? Because that's what, yeah. that's what my business does. What if we helped you? Because oh, my yeah. partner who is not here, but he is the whiz of home content creation he even runs a course called creating your own content so what if we helped you set up something that you could do like an like a 10 tips you know tutorial from yasmin about you know how to do nails and take care of nails and this could be like a project that yeah. you could sink your teeth into and have as yours to try and get your mind off all the rest of it and just to refuel that endorphins that yeah. you've been missing because I get happy when I talk about, you know, my favorite topic when it's the nail industry or even the beauty industry. It gets me super excited. And when I talk about journalism, yes, it's absolutely the same thing. Because I, I, I met plenty of newscasters throughout my three years of going to events and hanging out with them. And, you know, having, you know, girl, you know, like chit chat time or, you know, or girl talk of that makes, you know, <laughs> if it makes anything plausible. I, you know, I obviously hung out with a lot of people. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> No. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would love to do, I would love to help you do that. And like I said, if you ever need our help, you just, you know, the thing is, I think the tough part about depression and anxiety, and, and I'm going to say for myself, we sometimes feel that there's no one that can help or there's no one that gets us. You know, we kind of feel like we're alone in the process. Yeah that's what that's actually what happens so you keep it all bottled up um and then it gets worse yeah, I, you know i've had that a lot i know i'm feel you girl this is it's this is my this is my no this is my look at this hard, is... right? kept everything bottled up and then on the one day where it's coming out it's like oh no it's all hell breaks loose it's not you know it's not worth it and i do have people in my life that do have um struggles with mental health or let alone just you know anxiety or just depression or you know or anybody else for that matter so I, I can say that not just myself that wants to, that like myself who wants to be an aspiring newscaster or being a nail tech, I have, you know, I do have a voice in regards to mental health because I feel strongly about it. And I also feel strongly about, you know, relevant topics, you know, that are going on in the world right now. I keep myself educated as much as I can, you know, not just with the pandemic, not just with, you know, with the movement of Black Lives Matter, not just with the movement, you know, of, you know, of these you know kids and stuff that are stuck in cages in the ice detention centers i have to educate myself as well not just as an aspiring you know an aspiring newscaster but someone that loves you know the beauty industry as a whole or the you know nail industry i have to educate myself as best as i can so that i don't look you know stupid or anything like that and you know with mental health not many people talk about it so i feel like it is my duty as someone that's only that's only um 22 years old it's very hard you know to go through it but I you know I do tell people that it's okay you know everyone at some point we're, we're here for you you know what I mean so it's it's hard to put it into words in regards to what you know, I think what I've been beautifully I think you just put it beautifully into yeah. words I think you just spoke beautifully I think you've yeah. got an incredible voice 
And I think you, I think we could work together and try and work on you trusting it because the way that I hear you speak and everything that you're saying is very powerful. And I think it would resonate with so many people. So many people would love to hear from you. And I think you wouldn't know yourself. It's, it's, it's honestly, I think you just spoke really beautiful. You just, for me, you just touched yeah. me. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. It's just that I, I would love to get the word, you know, out there no matter what, you know, cause I, I just feel like when people put a label on the term mom um, disability, it's just like, you're not seeing the talent that we have. There's a lot of people that are in the community that were talented singers, were either talented actors or, um, or talented musicians for that matter. If, you know, if, you know, if, if I'm not, you know, being mistaken, you know, I, I don't know how to say it very well, but like, you know, for someone like myself that wants to be into different industries, you know, well, not at the same time, but just, you know, separately in order to pay for, you know, a, a future college of my choice, you know, here in LA one day. I wish people could not see me as someone that not only has Asperger's syndrome, but for someone that's, you know, that speaks eloquently. And I have, I'm someone that doesn't have a filter, but I can speak very eloquently and I'm very intelligent to a certain extent, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm very real. I have no filter. So I basically swear a bunch of times a day. David will tell you that. And I'm just being serious though. So. Hey, we all swear now and then. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say like I, I don't, I don't have a filter either. I don't have a filter either. You and I are very kindred like that, so. <laughs> yeah, here's to no, no filters. Like, here's to no filters. Yeah, team no filter. Oh my goodness, <laughs> without the hashtag. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm turning into Danny Romero. If he watches this, oh, hell no. He's one of my favorite weathermen, by the way. So if he watches this, Danny, you better call me a psych. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just had a Cardi B moment right there, sweetie. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, but seriously, that was just... Oh, I'm happy today for some reason. Hey, it's Danny. Mood. No, I was just joking. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, oh, no, that was cool. I know. Just joking. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. I already had a Skype chat with him a couple of months ago, so I would understand. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I get excited when I talk about my favorite weathermen. Oh, my gosh. I sound like I'm, you know, hooping and hollering, but don't worry. This is just how I talk a lot. <laughs> I love her. I love how you talk. I love, you know what, the, this is something I have to, you know, work really hard with a lot of my artists on, on is, is being able to have the freedom to talk like you do, because so many of them are so afraid of judgment that they, they never say what they really think and they yeah. never say what they really feel and they hold they on to all that stuff. Things. Yeah. Because, because you know, it's, it's a tough industry as it is. And then, and then, if, you know, everyone's worried about what, you know, what they're going to say and do and who's going to judge or who's going to think badly. And it's, it never ends. And so by the time I start working with people, you know, they've already built up so much self-esteem and self-worth issues. And this is a really big, this is one of my biggest passions. So, you know, you talk about this, uh, my biggest passion is self-worth and self-esteem. And I don't think that's exclusive to any one community. This is, this is for us all. This is for every single person. Yeah, should feel everybody. worthy. Yeah. Should feel worthy to be who they are. Very yeah, they should worthy to be who they are and have the freedom to say what they feel and think without outside judgment or criticism, especially when it comes from the heart and it's something important. Oh, yeah, beautiful. I feel I you. I totally that. Can understand what the is because you know I you know I dealt with that too when I was a lot younger, especially around my middle or high school days. Like I mentioned, I was bullied because I was in special education classes and because of having autism i was judged by so many people because i really put myself out there saying that i want to be a weather like a, originally i wanted to be in meteorology but later i found out in, until high school where it's very hard you know to study in math and science you have to be really um intelligent in those areas so i was like no i'm just going to switch it now to broadcast journalism or communications whether it's for radio or television so i had to you know change that until my junior year of high school because i felt like i was facing a lot of a lot of judgment, even from, from certain teachers back then in my middle school, they would obviously say very negative things, talking about, oh, why are you so obsessed with that old weatherman? Like, you know, it was just negativity that I wasn't used to, and I felt like I was closed in my own little world. It's just, 
I was bullied for a long time just because I, you know, I obviously have an intellectual disability and not many, you know, not many people know about that. And it hurt me so bad to the point where I had very negative thoughts about, you know, oh man, it's hard to talk about it, but I've had negative thoughts of, of suicide in my past when I was younger. And it's really sad, you know, for me to bring this up because it's a past that I don't want anyone else to relive. I never want anyone to go through what, what I went through, disability or not, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just like, I don't want anybody going through what I went through. Because I hear a lot of stories, even on the news, about teachers not doing smack about, you know, students saying that, like, oh, you know what, like, I feel like I'm going to be, you know, you know, I'm going to harm myself and all this other stuff. But then days later, this person or, you know, or these group of people are bullying that one person that, you know, that feels very lonely. They end up taking their own life. And I've seen the stories on the news or on social media about it. It's very sad. And I just don't want anybody to go through with what I went through for several years. It's, you know, it's it's so amazing that you say that you and I are very kindred. It's amazing that David thought this. But um, so I was 11 when I tried to kill myself. And I'm probably this is like the second or third time I've ever spoken about this publicly because my parents were celebrities. So um, and I grew up in Australia. I yeah. was different on a lot of different levels. So I was I had I was from another country. And in Australia at that point, um, you know, it, we have a lot of backwards stuff with race. I'm not going to lie. I think we've got a long, long, long yeah. way to go when it comes to inclusion and diversity on a lot of scales. And so when I was younger, I was different for that. I was also singled out because I had famous parents. And so, yeah, I was bullied in the same way and I didn't want to live. So I really, really, really understand exactly how you feel. And, you know, this is exactly why I do what I do. Because I don't want anyone to feel like that either. And I'm I'm devastated that I'm having a conversation with a girl that's 22, who's 14 years my junior, and she still had to go through that because that means that we haven't had change. And I always talk about change. When real change happens, it's it's the time that we stop talking about change. Do you know what I mean? When change is actually going to happen, it's the time that we, we stop talking about what inclusion is. We stop talking about what diversity is. We stop talking about people, you know, being bullied because all of a sudden that's just a part of normalcy that everyone is included and we have diversity across every platform and people feel loved. And, you know, and it affects everybody. Just like it affects everybody. I had a friend too who, who, who left and... I, I still haven't gotten over it fully. So it's a it's a it's a domino effect that and sends waves. So it's like that it's 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 the waves, but it's a a negative wave and we just if we all work together, if we all loved each other more, then we can all heal and have more positivity. Yeah. I feel like I'm never going to be fully healed, even though I do say sometimes, I'm like, oh, I feel like, you know, this is behind me. It's never going to be behind me because I can't forgive, you know, the people in my past who really like left a hole in my heart because depression and anxiety is nothing to, to ever joke about or ever, um, you know, it, it's nothing, you know, to take lightly because at some point everybody goes through something, even especially in this long pandemic that we're in, everybody's going through some sort of mental health you know, struggle right now, even, even I'm going through it right now, but I'm glad that I'm talking, you know, to, you know, to you and to Jessica right now, and to everyone, you know, that, that will be watching this, I just want to say that if you don't have someone in your life, know that I love you, and know that everybody loves you, yeah. because I'm, I'm tired of, you know, of, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm fed up with, you know, what the violence is going on, especially, you know, in this country, and other parts of the, of the world where, Oh my gosh, I, I really didn't want to have to get into this topic, but when I when I was watching, I guess I don't know if any of you had seen like the um, I guess like the the media back when um when there was a lot of people marching, you know, for Black Lives Matter, and I guess in the wake of the George Floyd, um, you know, murders and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Avery, it, it hurt me really bad because I'm someone that's Mexican American and I have you know friends and you know in my life that are in the African American community and also that are um. And I also do know a few transgender people in that African-American community as well. And people are so quick to forget the LGBT plus community that are being either attacked or being killed. And, you know, it's taken a toll on my mentality because 
I don't want to have to hear on the news one more time about hearing another African American person or another person of color getting, you know, getting killed. It's it's disgusting that there's officers that do abuse their power. And I wanted to talk about that today, even though I didn't, you know, you know, think this through. It just came up in my mind that, you know, this is what I want to say. This is another platform that I feel strongly about about systemic racism in the country. It, it's it's very sad to see that nothing is being done to protect, you know, people that are of different ethnicities and not to mention the LGBT plus community as a whole. And I'm getting, you know, I'm very, I'm, excuse my French, I'm getting very fucking tired of it. It's really disgusting that this still happens throughout the years and nothing is being done. But there is, you know what, because every time we have these conversations, we're doing something. You know, every time we're not afraid yeah. to have these conversations, we're doing something. And we're, we are the, we are the people that are going to make it change. Like I, I heard uh, Joe Biden's speech and I loved it because it was we the people. I mean, I wasn't from America, but I feel American. I feel like I'm much a part of this huge revolution as I've ever felt. Actually, I feel more affinity here right now than I've, than I ever felt in Australia, which is very interesting for me. And I'm working this out about myself. This is my home. Yeah. And I, I love what you're saying because this is how we create change and we lead the world in creating this change. That's, that's where the things, and this is the way it's always been. And you know what? I was going to go back to one little thing you said before, cause I would love to offer you a little bit of advice. Forgiveness is a very, 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 yes. very hard thing to do, but you should remember that when you forgive, it's not for them. It's for you because when you can forgive, you release a little bit of that pain and you don't have to hold on to it anymore. And as someone that has been really hurt many, many, many times, that's why I forgive because that's who I am. I'm that person. And by me forgiving you, I remind myself of that their actions have no correspondence to who I am. Their actions are because of who they are and they have to work through that. But my actions are because of who I am. And I'm going to show people that the world is full of forgiveness and love. And That's I think you're good advice. I, I love that. I love that advice. Just that it's very hard for me to forgive someone because I've been hurt, you know, for a long time. And I know what it's also like to hurt other people. I'm not going to lie. But it's just that when I, you know, when I've been through my personal or now, you know, public struggles, you know, it's very difficult, you know, to you know, to forgive, but I think your advice, you know, it is going to help me. I want to say little by little, it'll, it'll help me, you know, no matter what. Little by little, one, one step at a time, you know? Yeah. Thank you both. Thank you both. This was so healing. And, you know, you have to go through that, that pain to get through to the other side. And, um, yeah. uh, you, you, you took us on a journey of, of healing right here. So thank you both. Thank yeah. you. You are. Thank you, Yasmin. It was a pleasure. So excited. So touched to have met you. Very kindred soul. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. Oh my gosh, it's just like trying not to like bust out in tears again, but you know you it can. Duh, you you be. I love crying. I'm a vulnerable girl. I cry all the time. So. I'm a vulnerable. I, I know. I start <laughs> crying all the time. Step into that superpower. <laughs> well, let me take this time to quote Cardi B. I'm gangster. I cry at least once a month. No, but seriously, I am, you know, I, I do get emotional when things, you know, do get to me with relevant topics or mental health. And I, I feel really strongly about everything in general. And, you know, if we weren't giving, given that ability to have emotion, then we wouldn't have it. But, hey, we have it. Why not just let it happen? Yeah, it has emotions. Yeah, it has emotions at some point. I feel very relaxed right now talking about, you know, the things that are going around, not just myself, but it's probably going around other people right now. And I want to help as best as I can with not just my words, but with my platforms. Yeah. Well, I'm excited because now Yasmin is going to go and show you were on your your pictures advertised on on for yes the um well, 
Um, so I wanted to explain it, like I mentioned before, I've gone to AIDS Walk Los Angeles since October 2017 through 2019. And I noticed that one of my pictures was, it was advertised not just on the AIDS Walk LA website, but also on their Instagram and their Facebook and their Twitter as well. I was just shocked, like, oh my God, that's me. And I started crying. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like that's, I didn't think this would happen. But that was just crazy to see myself you know, on their, you know, I guess on all over their social media, right. it's just, I'm like, wait a minute, so are, a lot of people are going to see this, Yeah. but I was just, you know, having a good time, because I was taking photos with, um, I went to News Morning Anchor, or Midday Anchor, Philip Palmer, I was like, you know, going like this, I do have the photo, I guess, from my perspective, and I think someone must have came by and took that photo, I don't know who it was, but I was just like, in the moment, so I didn't know what happened. It's wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's a gorgeous photo. Thank you. Uh, and you're both gorgeous, and thank you, thank you. Thank you. I love this. I do, too. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.